Welcome back to Jungle Gap. Patch 14.4 has just dropped and I wanted to quickly make a video to share my thoughts and predictions explaining where each of the champions sit in the current meta depending on your rank and who you should be abusing for free low. Now there were some nerfs this patch to shake up the placings and just as a PSA, the tier list is just my opinion. Um, I did look at win rates but I'm not basing the rankings off them. If you disagree with anything I say or want me to elaborate further, leave a comment below. What's up everyone, just letting you all know that the Jungle Gap Patreon is now available with three different tier lists. So if you want to gain access to full coaching sessions, tier lists, group coaching sessions and much more, head on over and check it out. Okay, to start things off, we're going to be going through, you know, the best junglers on 14.4. Uh, starting off with Shivana. Now, this has been a sleeper pick for a while, honestly. Um, even myself kind of slept on her. Extremely good for low elo, I would recommend. Very low skill ceiling. I almost feel like she can be played as, you know, almost like a formula. Um, you know, full clearing, stacking dragons, and, and scaling really, really well. Uh, she's quite flexible as well. So she can be doing the Shoujin build. Um, this build, I think, is better when you're not solo AP. So if you have a, other AP sources in your comp, I think doing the Shoujin build is really good. Uh, also, if you're versing more tankier comps, I think the Shoujin build is also good. However, if you're solo AP, uh, I also think the Nash's Tooth into Death Cat build is really good. Um, and, you know, just because, you know, I think Shivana is the best full clear AP jungler right now. That's why I do place her in S tier. Um, and, you know, every other full clearing AP jungler kind of getting, getting nerfed is the reason why I think she's the strongest AP jungler on the patch right now. Uh, moving on to Udyr. Same as Shivana not getting hit by any of the other nerfs that all the other full clear AP junglers are getting hit by. Um, as opposed to Shivana, he kind of has an insane early game um, power. However, he does kind of fall off compared to Shivana in the late game. So you kind of need to do some damage. You need to stack the dragons. You need to get the game kind of going as Udia. Um, as opposed to Shivana, she's just, you know, a little bit weaker early, but she scales insanely well. Uh, now, moving on to Kha'Zix. This is an interesting one as well because... <coughs> All the other 80 junglers this patch, you know, the Kindred, the Belveth, um, they kind of got nerfed this patch. So I think, especially with, you know, Kha'Zix being strong into the AP junglers as well, um, I think that out of the 80 junglers, I think he's on another level. Um, but do note that I, f I do think Kha'Zix is a little bit high skill ceiling. So I think, you know, in lower elos, maybe below diamond, he probably drops to A or even B tier. But, you know, in, in, in high elo, uh, in my opinion, right now, I think Kha'Zix is, is really strong. Okay, so now moving on to the A tier. Um, first champion we're going to be talking about is Lilia. She has received a nerf this patch. I don't think this takes her, you know, out of her strength. I still think she's very, very strong. Uh, but obviously, I've had her <laughs> at S tier for the past two patches. And I think that just compared to Shivana and Udyr, she is a little bit weaker. So she can't really be put on the same level. Um, with this nerf, but I think she's still a very solid pick for low elo and for high elo. Um, so all around, still a very, very solid pick. Moving on to Amumu now. This champion is like literally Thanos in low elo. Um, still decently good at high elo. So, you know, in low elo, I'd probably place him S tier, S plus tier. Low elo being, you know, under Emerald, under Diamond. Um, would recommend for that, for, for that kind of ranking. And yeah, overall, just... Kind of like Shivana, where very, very low skill ceiling. Um, so you can kind of play him like a formula where you just full clear to bot, press your ult on the bot lane, get the dragon. This kind of play style, very, very good scaling. Good in low, um, in, in low elo games because they're very slow. So his scaling is also very good. Now, moving on to Nidalee. Uh, she did receive a little nerf this patch. Um... Which I don't really think it's going to change, you know, the whole identity of the champion. It's still going to be very, very, very high skill ceiling champion. You need to be proficient. Um, she thrives in servers like, uh, like Korean solo queue, right? Um, when the games are very, very fast paced. So, you know, this champion is probably D tier in bronze Oceania. Uh, but S or still S plus tier in Korean challenger. So just, just the kind of champion is doesn't really change much. Diana is next. Um, so just like how the other AP junglers um, were being nerfed, Diana has not been touched yet. That's why I've placed her a step above, you know, some of the other AP junglers, excluding Lilia, Udia, Amumu, and Shivana. Um, 
And still just, yeah, overall a pretty solid pick. She's not as flexible, so you, you kind of do want to be solo AP as Diana. Um, you do like pairing such as Yasuo and stuff like that. But still overall pretty solid. I think she's okay in low elo. Maybe she's like B plus below, below Emerald and she gets a little bit better above Emerald. Um, but yeah, moving on to Hecarim now, he received a little, I think it was a buff to his E and I think it was a buff to his W, even though they say adjustments. Um, the W buff makes his, obviously you need to be better at using his W, but it is just an overall buff to when you do use it. And, and, and you know, I think he's going to become a little bit higher skill ceiling. Um, but out of all the 80 junglers, I think he's also been kind of slept on for a while, honestly. Uh, I think there was a, you know, the rank four Korean Hecarim OTP. Um, that's kind of proving with that with that build he was doing with the uh, Eclipse, the Eclipse build, um, that Hecarim is still, you know, kind of a sleeper pick as well. Uh, moving on now to Nocturne. I think that still a level above the other 80 junglers, um, you know, Similar formula to how, you know, it's a solid pick, you full clear, you use your ult. So these champions are just very, very consistent. So they're, they're especially good at lower elo because Nocturne kind of has a lower skill ceiling. Um, so yeah, solid pick. I think A tier kind of across the board doesn't really change high elo and low elo, just kind of solid A tier across the board. Um, I will say like, you know, the reason you don't see him in like Korean Challenger or something like that is because the games when they do tend to be a little bit faster pace, like games that Nidalee kind of likes, Nocturne kind of suffers because obviously he's like a turn-based champion. You need to just full clear, use his ult, full clear, use his ult. So obviously in, in, in specific scenarios like a Korean solo queue challenger scenario, you won't see him as much. Okay, so now moving on to Viego. Um, I think Viego is still a very solid uh, pick. Um, I believe that, you know, he's just a very good AD option. Obviously compared to Nocturne, he has a higher skill ceiling, so I would kind of re recommend um, Viego in the high elos, you know, above Emerald. Um, whereas Nocturne, you know, I'd recommend in all ranks, and he's especially good at low elo. All right, so moving on to B tier now. Um, firstly, we're going to be kind of talking about um, these champions. Because um, I kind of categorize them simi similarly. Um they're just not on the same level as, you know, the Shivana, the Udia, the Lilia, the Diana, due to both, you know, nerfs and just overall strength in the current meta. Um, Brandon, Morgana, and Fiddle have lower skill ceilings, so they're kind of better for low elo if you want to pick them up. Um, Zyra, Talia, Karthus, high skill ceiling, um, can be played at high elo, but I just don't really see why you would pick them, you know, over these kind of picks, you know, here. Like... These picks are just much stronger. Obviously, these champions have also received many nerfs. Brand got nerfed this patch. Zyra got nerfed this patch. Um, Karthus has been nerfed in the past. Morgana's just not as strong. Tilly has been nerfed. And Fiddlesticks, kind of, you know, maybe at lower elos, he can be a bit higher. But at, at high elos, um, he's kind of predictable of what he wants to do. Okay, so now moving on to the category of champions. I'm going to be talking about these four champions. Um, the AD champions. Kindred and Belveth kind of getting nerfed. Um, but these all kind of fit in the same category of, you know, they could be A tier. Um, they kind of just rely on your proficiency. They have a high skill ceiling, so they're better and they have serve more value at high elo. Um, you know, I've had Kindred and Belveth in S tier for like the past three patches. Um, but with these nerfs, I think they have more room to kind of be in A tier if you're above diamond and you're proficient. Um, if you're below diamond, I would not recommend these champions. Um, obviously, if you're extremely proficient, proficient, you can still make them work, but I would not recommend them. They probably drop to kind of like C tier, maybe C plus tier um, if you are below emerald or diamond. I think Rek'Sai has a little bit more breathing room. He can probably stay in B tier for high elo and low elo, um, which is interesting because we're going to be moving on to the next kind of set of, set of champions, which is the Zin and uh, these four guys. Um, I think Zin as well, just like Rek'Sai, can kind of stay in the B, it's kind of B plus tier. Um, I do think his ceiling is, you know, I wouldn't kind of recommend Zin for low elo still, but I, I would still say, you know, he's 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 a solid B, B plus tier, um, depending on what elo, being B plus being if you're high elo. Um, the next four champions, the Warwicks, the Briars, the Pantheons, the Volibear. Now, these are champions which are low skill ceiling, 
Um, kind of straightforward. So if you're below emerald, below diamond, I would say that these are like B plus, maybe even ATL, or definitely ATL if you're below emerald, these four champions. Um, however, if you're above diamond, because of the nature of how kind of straightforward they are, um, I think they kind of suffer. And so I would kind of leave them in B, maybe even B minus if you're above diamond. You know, maybe maybe even dropping to C tier like the Volley Bears and the Warwicks, maybe even dropping to C plus. So moving on to the next category of champions, we have, you know, the Ivans, the Elises, um, the Jacks, the Nunu. So these are quite interesting. Um, I'll talk about Ivan first. I think Ivan, I would not recommend in lower elo, just for the fact that you don't really want to rely on other people to carry you, which is what Ivan essentially is. He's kind of a support jungle. However, in high elo, you know, challenger, I would say in the right comp, um, he's really, really strong. So, you know, he can go e anywhere between A, A tier, maybe even A plus tier if he has the right comp. And the right comp he kind of likes is, you know, a bruiser top, you know, a Tristano, ADC mid, a Nautilus support, someone who can frontline for him and someone he can support. So in Challenger, A, A tier, maybe, maybe Master tier, he's still going to be, you know, A tier. Um, but in low tier, I wouldn't recommend. He probably drops to maybe, maybe even C, C plus tier. Elise, kind of similar thing. So the, a lot of these champions are kind of comp reliant. Um, they're more niche picks. So, so Elise also wouldn't recommend for low elo, has a high skill ceiling, she kind of falls off late game. So, you know, in low elo games, they always go to like 40, 50 minutes. Um, but there is value in Elise in high elo because the game is much faster. You know, you can pick around, you know, people will pick around your champion around comps. So, you know, people will pick 80 champions to pair with you, like the Renektons, you know, the Pikes, stuff like that. So in above diamond, if you're proficient, can be like, you know, B, B plus, maybe even A tier. Um, but if you're below, kind of falls below, maybe in the C tier, maybe in, you know, B minus. Um, Zach, another champion that I would say he's kind of better at low elo. Um, and at high, at high elo, you kind of only want to be picking um, when the enemy picks a mobile carries. So, you know, if you see like a Jin, if you see like an Oriana, I think Zach is definitely very viable. Um, Ramus, another pick that is comp dependent. So if the enemy champs pick 580 attacks, you know, auto attacking champions, he's very, very strong. Um, I would even say he's viable at high elo and low elo, but in low elo, he can be like literally S plus tier, just the same as a Mumu. Um, and yeah, just because of the simplicity of, of, of the champion, very, very rewarding at low elo. Jax is <clears throat> just kind of a good counter pick against AD attack, like champions, just, such as like Viego. Um, and that's pretty much the, the purpose that he serves. I don't see any other reason why you would pick Jax. I don't necessarily think he's high skill ceiling or low. Probably would put him towards the higher skill ceiling. Um, but I think that serves, that's kind of his main purpose. And finally, moving on to Nunu. Uh, this is a champion that um, I did actually look at the win rate for this champion just because I wanted to kind of be, you know, educated on, on, on kind of like his state. I wasn't really sure. So I didn't really know. So I wanted to look at his win rate to kind of confirm. Um, and his win rate does seem pretty consistent throughout the ELOs. I think that the simplicity of the champion and the low skill ceiling um, is good for low ELO. And I think also the, you know, he you can kind of play him like an Elise, like a spam ganking jungle, like a Rek'Sai in high ELO. And I think that could also work. Um, but I don't really see an overall strength making him, you know, well above B tier or well below B tier. He kind of just sits in the middle. Um, and yeah. Okay, now moving on to C tier, an interesting category. Um, these are pretty much champions that I would not recommend or that you would need to be a really, really good OTP. So as you can see here by like the first bunch of champions, I'm going to categorize these all into one. Um, these are champions that you kind of need to just be a Giga Smurf, right? These are all Giga Smurfing champions. Would not recommend in low elo, like 100% would not recommend. Um, maybe Kane is a little bit different. I think that Kane I've seen at lower elos has some success. Um, but for the rest of the champions, these are pretty much only if you're, you know, above diamond and you're just like a dedicated one trick, these champions are still viable. So if you're, you're a dedicated one trick above diamond, I think these can be, you know, anywhere between B, A, probably not still, still probably not S tier, but between B and A tier. Um, however, if you're below Emerald, these are like straight C tier, maybe even below C tier. Um, 
the Javan Vi Wukong category is next. And these are kind of champions that, you know, higher skill ceiling again. Um, usually have a quite a quite a niche, especially in high elo. For example, Javan is, you know, you, there's just no reason you would pick Javan. It's not on the same level as, you know, anything above it, like the Viego, um, even like the Zin or like the Rek'Sai, Pantheon, Volibear. Like, there's just not really much reason to pick him. He's just a bit lower. Um, but I think that he could kind of be B tier in the right comp, in the right scenario in high elo. Uh, Vi, pretty straightforward champion. So I think compared to Jarvan, uh, I think Vi is um, more playable at low elo, um, but still kind of high skill ceiling because a lot of times when I see low elo players play Vi, they kind of just like are suiciding in with their ult. Um, and that's kind of the skill of Vi. That's why she's kind of a competitive pick. That's why you see her in competitive so much. She serves a very, very specific niche, which is locking down mobile carries. Um, so I would not recommend for low elo. You can play it in challenger or like master tier if you see the right composition for it then it kind of moves up to like the b b plus tier um and wukong to finally finish off this category um just you know weaker in terms of levels like why would you pick wukong over like a hecarim why would you pick wukong over obviously they serve different purposes compared to like a nocturne but just significantly weaker than um the champions above him and you know, I could see a situation in, in like high elo and, you know, maybe he can be like B tier or B plus tier if he has the right comp. You know, if he has like paired with like a Rakan or like a like a Yumi, um, I think he could be playable, but just a lot weaker than the other champions. Uh, moving on to the next category now, these are all kind of lower skill ceiling champions, maybe besides, you know, I have to go over Gragas first because he's kind of in his own unique category. Um, I think Gragas is... Something I wouldn't recommend at low elo. Again, he has a higher skill ceiling. Um, I think he's a little bit comp dependent. I don't really see why you'd pick him over the other AP options above him. However, specifically when you when paired with a champion like Yasuo, I think he can bump up to you know the B B plus tier because he sets him up. Um, okay, so now talking about these category of champions, um, these are all low skill ceiling champions. Um, so I think in lower elos, they can kind of be bumped up to, to you know, the B tier. Um, but especially for high elo, um, maybe excluding like the Poppy and the Sedge because they have a somewhat of a, of, a, of a position in high elo in terms of like Poppy being a counter pick, you know, very, very high challenger. You know, it's funny because these champions in very, very high challenger actually have a, you know, have they, they could even be like A tier in, in the right comp. You know, if you're playing Sejuani with like a Fiora and a Yone um, in challenger, I think he can be very, she, she can be very, very strong. Same with Poppy. But generally, these champions um, are just weaker than, you know, the rest of the of the champions in the meta. Um, I would, however, recommend these champions more to lower elos rather than, you know, excluding the Sejuani and the, and, and the Poppy. Rather than these champions in high elo, they're just not really going to work compared to when Lilias and, and Shivanas are running around. And lastly, we get to the D tier. Okay, so some of these champions are just like the other C tier champions where you need to be a Giga Smurf. So like the Zeds, the Talons, you know, just like these category of champions here, you kind of need to be a Giga Smurf. I would not recommend these champions for low elo. I would definitely say that even if you are like proficient um, and you're diamond, I would say that these champions still only fit around like the B tier. Um, you know, you need to be like Challenger, Korean solo queue, Silas, for example, to pull this champion off. And then you just look like a Giga Smurf. But for the 99.9% the .9 of the rest of the, the player base, you shouldn't really look to touch these champions. Um, I think that, you know, obviously champions like um, like Olaf and Trundle, maybe even Mundo, you know, they, they are playable in low elo, but I just would not recommend them over other things such as like the Amumus, um, the Ramus, um, you know, even the Shivanas. Like I just would not recommend these champions over them and they're just significantly weaker. So, you know, they're pretty much C tier champions, just the weaker version. That's why they're in D tier. And with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you were able to take something from this. And, you know, as I said before, leave a comment below um, if you disagree or if you want me to elaborate on any of these things further.